All right, everybody, my name is Kevin Bandy. This is Toby Ho. Uh, we're uh, going to present HTML5 today. All right, first, so any of you guys with a mobile phone, I imagine a couple people here probably have smartphones. Uh, if you want to go to onslide.com slash html5, uh, yes, you can. You can go from desktop and go there as well. <laughs> if you want to go to that address right now, uh, that'll give you. We'll have somewhat of an interactive experience. So we'll go ahead and start with this poll. Um, so, who is using HTML5 today? No need to shout out or raise your hand. Uh, log into here, and we'll start seeing these tally up. On slide.com slash HTML5, and uh, if we don't have too many people blocking the screen with the fun little buttons, then, uh, <laughs> then we'll be able to see those results. So according to this, there's only seven people here with smartphones. Is that, is that accurate? <laughs> no, it's for Android. <laughs> so does, does it not work on Android? No. I'm sorry, I got the buttons, like, I got the buttons, but I can't see what they do. <laughs> the one on the left is yes, by the way, and the one on the right is nope, I wish. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. It should show the uh, the title, but I can... Oh, uh, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, 10 people, that's better. There's 10 mobile users out here. All right, so we'll, we'll take this as representative of the group. Um, awesome. Good. So you guys probably, a lot of you probably know what HTML5 is. All right, so what we want to talk about today is these new standards that have been introduced. So it's not necessarily focusing on what HTML5 contains and ignoring everything from CSS3 and JavaScript improvements. We want to include that as well. So when we speak about HTML5, we're talking today about all of these new standards. Um, and uh, be, be, be easy on the, uh, on the little fun buttons there. I know it's entertaining, but we, we do have some meaningful content today. I promise. Um, so we're going to talk about HTML5 these standards, and we're also going to uh, do some live coding, and you guys are welcome to uh, follow along. Um, so, so, um, sure. uh, so I guess the HTML5 came out of a sort of a fork in the standards body, in a way. Are they here? Yeah, we're here. Hello? Still okay? 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 The core of the group, they wanted to go the XML route, while a separate group of people um, wanted to do this other thing. So, so this separate group of people, they formed another group called the What Working Group, and they a lot of the work that they did um, is what resulted <coughs> in the XML file. Um, it turned out that was a lot of cool ideas there, and and basically they merged again. Right. Uh, and backward compatibility is that HTML5 is most of what's in that standard is backward compatible with older browsers. And in most cases, if it's not, you can make it be so. So the people who wrote it up are very conscious of making things that were compatible so that you can use it today and not like 10 years from now. And the open, the 
the process of just developing the standard is very open. Uh, the spec itself is online and available for everyone. And So uh, yeah, the process is open um, with HTML5, and, and basically all that means is we are uh, they're allowing you to view the most current um, implementation of HTML5, and there's also an open forum for uh, suggestions and improvements to to the standards. So that that is something that they're definitely pushing as a priority. Um, in addition, what what really makes these standards happen is uh, is basically implementation wins or implementation winning. And basically, when someone comes out and decides to start supporting a standard, that's when it becomes a standard. Um, a lot of this can be found in, in uh, some documents that we'll give you reference to at the end of the talk. Uh, the, the last thing with the history of HTML5 that I wanted to mention was the fact that it's a retro spec. And basically, that means that a lot of people have been implementing these sorts of fixes in their web, in their web designs these days. And uh, they wanted to incorporate that into a standard, and that, that's what HTML5 is. That HTML4 and the pri previous uh, versions were also retrospect. So they, they kind of just standardized what people were already doing. So what is in HTML5? Well, there's, there's quite a bit. Um, and as I said, we're also including some of the CSS and JavaScript, so you'll think, see things like at font face, um, and we'll be showing you a lot of those today. But what we're definitely going to focus on is uh, doc type, because that's how you're going to start out, and that's how you declare that you're using HTML5. Um, the new HTML5 elements and tags, uh, we're moving towards a more semantic web, meaning things uh, do what they say they will do uh, by their title. And so what, what you see nowadays is uh, you probably use divs a lot. Um, in, in place of a div, you might be able to put something that says article or, or something that's more meaningful for your application. Um, gradients. Uh, gradients have in the past been very large images at some, in some cases, or if, if not, definitely images. With the new HTML5 and, and these uh, standards, we can now generate that and that's processed by CSS and rendered um, via CSS. And a similar manner, drop shadows are now included in there. And uh, a lot of these things are in implementing opacity as, uh, as something that's easily rendered with CSS. In the case of RGBA colors, if you set something like text or background color or something with, with a color command, you might have done um, RGB or hex values. Well, now RGBA has the ability to have uh, red, green, and blue value as well as an opacity um, included in that command. Uh, as well as media queries. Media queries allow you to uh, to specify how you will render sites based on screen size or based on window size. Uh, and, and that can call in different images or just display things in different locations and have different features. Uh, and web fonts, as I mentioned before, we will mention how now you can have pretty fonts and it will work on all HTML5 supported browsers. Which is good, and there are ways that uh, that non-HTML5 browsers can render it as well. So there's a couple of approaches to handle a lot of these techniques, um, and, and this is basically saying if you create an HTML5 site and it's trying to be rendered in a non-HTML5 compatible browser, at least specific to that element, there's a couple of trains of thought on how you might manage that. Uh, one is do nothing. So in the case of rounded corners. Well, it's not the end of the world, maybe it is in certain applications, but for the most part, to not have those rounded corners, it's not going to break your site, so you could do nothing and it would go to squared off corners. Uh, graceful degradation. That's basically saying you're going from, this is the beautiful site that I want to make using HTML5, and I will then go back and find uh, better solu or okay solutions that will work for non-HTML5 browsers. Uh, progressive enhancement is the opposite to that. You go from the direction of building something that, that is highly compatible or, or is much more simple, and then you start improving it to for each allowance, for each uh, type of browser that could render more and more capability. And then polyfills are your fixes. Polyfills are a, a way to go back and find tricks and little hacks 
to be able to fill those needs that, that the HTML5 command may not be doing in a non-HTML5 compatible browser. Okay, so there's a lot to talk about. We mentioned this already. Some of the things we're not going to talk about today is uh, CSS framework, something like uh, Bootstrap or any kind of framework. Uh, this is relevant and important, but uh, there's, there's so much to cover. That's not going to happen today, as well as CSS preprocessing like LESS and SAS, which uh, I believe this group has already done a talk on. I watched it online. Uh, you can view that video here if you're watching this on YouTube. Everybody else here just thinks I'm ridiculous, but supposedly there's a, a link to you. Um, all right, we can go on. Any questions? Okay, so we got a couple of questions using our awesome system. Do you currently use a doc type? Just a yes or no. The left button is yes, and the right button is no. There's somebody here that thinks the doc types are not a good idea. All right. Yeah, <laughs> So most of you are standards compliant, which is good. Uh, of CSS and JavaScript, uh, which one are you more proficient? We're just trying to get an idea of who's in the room. This, by the way, is, is dictating what direction this talk goes. So uh, if you guys vote in the wrong way, we're going to give you information that's not relevant to you. So, so we've, got a, uh, we've got quite a few. Um, or we have five people that, that are more proficient in CSS. All right, guys, this doesn't help. You can't have Eden. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let Toby take it from here. We're going to do some coding, so feel free to follow along. So um, I actually set up a, uh, a page on the internet that you can all get to. It's a uh, hands-on HTML5 that tobyhold.com, tobyhold that's me. Um, and I thought I'd start with this base page um, with it has minimal styling. So this is a good starting point to to make this page shiny or whatnot. Um, and if you want to follow along you can uh, you can like copy this file to your machine and rip on it. Uh, you can follow what I'm doing, or you could deviate, whatever you want to do. So I actually have, so I have my text editor here. Is that a good size for the text? Can you see it now? In the back? Can you see this okay? Yep. Okay. Alright. Uh, so, I'm actually going to run it uh, locally. And I'm going to use the library load browser plugin. So that library load is awesome. Uh, it's this little plugin, and that runs in the background so that whenever I modify a page and I save it, it should just reload it for me. Here we go. Like that. So I'm going to use that so I can save on uh, hitting the refresh button. Oh, and also, I would like um, some volunteers to help me test out what this page looks like on some other browsers than the one I'm using. So I'm using Chrome, but I like some volunteers to help me test on IE, for example. Can I get some of these? One? Anyone else? Everybody loves IE. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, what, what version of IE? Let's see. Four, three, four, nine. Alright, let's Can you, um, can make it eight. I'm not. I'm not you, you can like in the compatibility mode. Oh. Like, if you open up the the gear, the gear thing, and then go to the developer tools. Yeah. 
And then the compatibility mode, you see 9 right now, you can click on that and change it to 8. I have IEA. Yes, you can, you yeah. can help us out. Great. Uh, anyone want to help me test on Firefox? No? Oh. No participation? Oh. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so if I want you to uh, test something, then I'll let you know. So let's start with this web page, and let me go down my to-do list here. So the first thing I want to do is the mic. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, change the doc type. So, you'll remember this long, <coughs> huge doc type that, I mean, you're never going to type that by hand. Uh, and this one happens to be XML 1.0 transitional, but I don't really care. Like, all I really care about is that the browser is rendering it in standard mode, really. And in HTML5, you can reduce it down to this. And that works in all browsers. That just happens that that's the minimal bit of information the browsers need to trigger standard mode, which is what you want. We just want not cross mode. Um, and the HTML tag, you can get rid of all this stuff in between here, and you're just left with the language setting. Uh, the meta car set tag here, you can also like simplify that a lot. So an interesting thing is a lot of the browsers, um, so a lot of web authors were like, they would just not quote their attribute values because they're lazy and that that also works most of the time. So so the browser vendors saw that and they say, well it, well in, in this case it's like the char set part is actually supposed to be part of a string, but now it's getting interpreted as an attribute. But the vendors saw that happening so much they just said, Okay, we'll allow that anyway. So, as a result, <coughs> nowadays the minimum that you need for this meta tag is the char set part. All the other part is irrelevant. So you can simplify it down to that. And for like a link tag, you don't need to tell it to it's CSS anymore. I mean, is there any other kind of style sheet? <laughs> so, so all this is valid HTML5 markup. So. And what, one of the goals of HTML5 is make the developer's job easier, and this is one of the ways that it does it, just by simplifying the market. Alright, the next thing I want to go over is the new HTML5 <coughs> tags. So the semantic tags that Kevin was talking about. So some of those are header, footer, section tags, article, and map. So, and the advantage of using these is that because there's semantic meaning in these tags, um, later on when somebody else works on the code, it's easier for them to figure out what's going on. And also for robots that are trying to process through page, it's also easy to write programs that will get information about what's going on in your page. So let's just make liberal use of these tags. So there's a header, so I'm going to put in a header. Oops, sorry. So now we have a header. Um, there's also something called the H group element. And the H group is specifically for the use case where you have a title and then a subtitle, which is basically what we have. So I'm going to wrap an H group around these two h tags. Um, 
And then there's also the nav tag. So we can use that for this navigation list over here. And then down here, I have a bunch of diffs, which I'm going to convert to section tags. Now that we're semantic, um, I want to make the driving directions down here. I want to make that a separate section. And call the ID directions, maybe. And for the footer, I can just replace that with a footer tag. So now, now we're using all brand new HTML5 tags, and that makes me feel good. <laughs> it just looks so much nicer for some reason. I don't know. It's not all these generic this and span. Um, okay, so that's that's that. Uh, now I just want to make some simple layout changes. Um, so let's make this now navigation bar like put it on the left and put the rest of the content on the right. So make it like a two count kind of thing. So now let's make, let's open up the style sheet and do something good. So I'm using normalize.css and that's a very helpful CSS library. I guess. Um, it's it's like a CSS reset, except that it'll preserve the default styles that the browser has. But it'll also keep the appearance the same across different types of browsers. So it's very nice. It's a good baseline to use for your project. And I'm just going to put my styles here at the bottom. Did I mess up? So, right, live will set. Okay, so my styles. So I want to make the nav go on the left. So I'll float it to the left. Um, and then to make the other parts go to the right, I'll just use the margin. So I'll say all the sections will have a left margin. I don't know, 200 pixels. I'm not a designer, by the way. Uh, let's let's make the footer go over there too. So if if there's anything like I could be doing smarter, I'm sure some of you would know better than me. So just speak up. All right. So uh, well, maybe, maybe the list. I don't like I don't like this little. Adding and well, maybe I should uh, center the header first. Cause I, I was going to do that. Gonna make center the headers. Click the line center. Hello. All right. Let's just stop here for now and move on. All right. The next thing I want to do to change the style is I want to give a background color to the individual sections to sort of separate them a little bit. So sections should have a background color of say off white. Uh, okay. And they're separated, but um, let's give it a little bit of padding maybe to them. Um, so something like that, but now they're not separated. So I can do a mark on the bottom to separate them. All right. So that's cool. Uh, let's give the body a kind of padding. Okay, that's good for now. 
Uh, oh, okay. So now let's use a HTML5 feature. Let's make <coughs> let's make these sections rounded corners. So let's give, give them rounded corner. And like in the old days, you have to make four images, one for each corner, right? And put put in like extra elements in the markup to attach those corners to the boxes. It's kind of annoying. Nowadays, it's very easy. We just do uh, border ranges. And now we have rounded corners. Good. Um, okay. So, rounded corners. Let me deploy that to the live website. And. Uh, can the volunteers test it on their respective browsers? See if it works. You're going to need a rounded corner for uh, WebKit and Mock. Huh? You're going to need a rounded corner for WebKit and Mock. Oh, okay. Did you test that on your browser? No, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good point. So, the rest, um, so like this is HTML5 is not completely solidified, so. Um, now our browser renders they sort of support the features sort of before it's mature, but it, I guess they're worried that the feature might not be spec compatible yet, so they put in a vendor prefix to kind of segregate their feature from everyone else's. But essentially, it works the same. So for WebKit browsers, especially the older ones. Uh, you sometimes have to say WebKit radius, and then for Firefox, you have to say remote radius. And this can get kind of tedious to do for other different processes. And that, that's a place where CSS processors are really shine, I guess. And it'll do all this tedious stuff for you. Uh, so, do you have any problems on IE or something? Yeah, IE. Don't it doesn't look good. What's the problem? They don't give me uh, background images on section or background color for sections. Okay, let me let me see on my. Also, it's not very good. Yeah, it's not very good. Oh, I have to keep going in. Okay, so let me let me see on my IE so everyone can see. So yeah, on on IE, this is the same page, but it all that styling I've been doing that, that doesn't affect IE for some reason. And the reason is, I think this is IE eight. Um, yeah, so IE eight and below doesn't support the new fancy HTML tags, the the headers and navs and so forth. It doesn't support that. Uh, and the way, the way in which it doesn't support that is it doesn't let you style them. <laughs> so all these style rules that I've been putting in, they're just ignored. Uh, but there's a fix for that, and th this is this is an, a good example of a polyfill, actually. Uh, it, there's a little JavaScript called the HTML5 script. <coughs> which is just a bit of JavaScript you can include in your head section. And once you do that, those things will start working on IE. But, but instead of using this, I'm actually going to use Modernizer. Modernizer will do what that one does, and it also got some extra features, which I'm going to use later on. So I'm just going to use Modernizer. Good. Uh, what happened to their site? It looks. <coughs> oh, okay. I have to. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Different from when I was looking at it this morning. I was like, I'm not crazy. Alright. Okay. I think that's all the CSS free stuff is the only thing. So you can actually like custom build your modernizer. So I'm gonna download this, and I'm just gonna add this modernizer to my project, paste that in, and save that. Yes. <coughs> Alright. And, and I'm gonna put in. 
Luke and modernizing save it. And that should hopefully fix my problems on IE. And yes it did. Except it's got no rounded corners. And I'm I'm fine with that. I'm just gonna leave leave it be on IE and have it have square corners. So that, that's the example of the do nothing <laughs> strategy <coughs> for uh, backward compatibility. Uh, all right. So the next thing. Oh, let's pick a font for this page. Let's pick a cool web font. So the place I get my web font is Google because it's free and I'm cheap. I get haircuts from Walmart. <laughs> and, uh, so let's let's put in hands on HTML5 and I want a font that looks good really big. Uh, if you see something you really like, shout it out. Troy. Which one? Troy. Troy? Yeah. Uh, is that on the screen? Or no, but it's been Google Alright, Joy. Joy sends? Yeah. Okay. So once you find the one you like, I uh, just click on quick use. That's the fastest way to use it. Let's make it bold. Sure, why not? Uh, so the easiest way to include a font like this from uh, Google Web Font is just to copy in this. CSS link into your page. Copy it right in there. And then you have to uh, set in your CSS, set the font family to this droid thing. So I guess let's just, let's just make everything droid sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to? <laughs> Or maybe we should just make the title. Alright, so Joy Sans, and we should fall back to Sans Straight, like it's suggesting. We got a space. Alright, let's see. Oops. No. Yeah. Hmm. Did that work? I think you need to talk to Oh. <coughs> okay. Uh, does that look good? Do you like that? I don't know. I'm kind of wanting something more exciting. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but let me make this header really big. Uh, yeah, let's just make the header really big. <laughs> that might be a little too much. Uh, yeah, I need this one. Alright, that's good. Um, I think I want to pick something else. Quick sand. Uh, very sparingly, so 
I'm only going to apply it to the title or the header. <coughs> Um, let's see. So the way you do that is you say text shadow. Text shadow takes four parameters, I think. So there's like an offset, x offset, y offset, and then blur. I just do zero blur. Some background color. So that's what I. That's what I do. Um. Maybe I want to do the H1 separate from the from the H3. And I'm gonna take this offset a little bit less. Okay, okay that's fine. Um. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me deploy that and just make sure. Um, yeah, the volunteers that are testing for me, uh, make sure it works on all the different browsers. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a break. And uh, maybe, maybe let if you guys are like working on like just a five minute break. If if you wanna catch up or something or chat with your neighbor. And then we'll, we'll come back to it in five minutes. Okay. So, so I I, um, I listened to this guy's podcast. It's, it's called boatworld.com. And uh, and on his website, he's got this picture of himself here. And when you hover over it, there's this like rotating and zooming effect and six out of time and I thought oh that's pretty cool let's do that so let's, let's do that effect um, so I'm gonna add my picture to this page probably next to where it talks about me I'm gonna go to my website to get because I have a picture there, so I'm just going to copy the URL and drop it in as an image tag. Here. I want the text to wrap around it, so I think I'll make it a float. So I'll call this avatar, and then I'll make that a float. Uh, probably give it margin <coughs> like that. That's fine. Um, so now let's get a little fancy. Uh, let's give it a drop shadow here. So, and the way you give elements drop shadow is you use the box shadow property, and that's just like the text shadow. So there's an offset and a blur and a color. Uh, I'm gonna go with zero offset and maybe like a large blur. And so it's like that. Maybe a little darker than that. So now there's a drop shadow. Um, so now, now we want to, like, so before we make this zoom effect, let's tilt it a little bit. And you can use CSS transitions, or not, no, not transitions, transforms to make these rotations or scaling kind of an effect to different elements. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say transform, transform, transform. I'm sorry. WebKit transform, uh, rotated 
one degree with the G. I think I did it. Make it more noticeable. Three degrees. All right. Um, and then, yeah, that's good. So, so now let's make it connect the effect where when you hover over the image, I want it to rotate back to straight and then sort of enlarge a little bit, the, the zoom effect. So how do I do that? Uh, I can go use the hover super class. I can say when it hovers, I want to make it rotate back to center. And that works. Cool. But I, I want it to transition. I want it to animate back there, not just jump to it. So you use the, that's when you use transition. So what could transition <coughs> All point five seconds is in count. Oh, there we go. So um, maybe I just talk through this. So transition is it animates a set of properties of set of CSS properties. When you say all, that means all CSS properties that can do any kind of transition. So examples would be you know, position or transform. It's like the degree in which you transform. You know, you, you can anything you can between uh, opacity or colors, you can do those with. And this is this is a duration in seconds. How long the transition is supposed to be, and then in and out is like a mathematical function that guides the transition. So that's very cool. Uh, I also want to zoom it though, so I can actually add to this transform. What happened? Alright, so I can add to this uh, transform and say scale is slightly bigger. 1.2 times as big. So now I get this zooming effect. That's kind of cool. All right. And uh, okay. Oh, uh, I'll keep going. Actually. Yeah. And keep going. So uh, next, I want to demonstrate the RGBA colors, which is. It, it, oh, go ahead. Question. Obviously, in that the example you showed on the website, the other one that, that you got this idea from, that it, at the end of that transition, the picture changed. So how would you change it to a different picture at the end of that, you know, it comes back to zero? The picture actually didn't change. You're talking about oh, the well, tongue? Yeah. That's actually an animated joke. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yep. All right. So. So, so I want to demonstrate RGBA colors. So basically, it allows you to do semi-transparency with colors. And to demonstrate that, first thing I'm going to do, I actually, let's add a texture to the background of this page. So I'm going to go to subtlepatterns.com and just download a pattern off of there. Yep. Very good website. Um, okay. I think I like these stripes. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll download these stripes and save that to I'm just going to call it BG that thing. And I think what I have to do is say background. Your thing uh, repeat, repeat because it's a palatable image, and maybe fall back to off white. Oh, there we go. So 
So that's cool, but I don't like this because the sections are now just gray, and that doesn't look nice. What I want is for these section backgrounds to be see-through, so you can see the texture in the background. So that's where our DBA colors come in. Um, so under sections, I'm going to say background color where it used to be a solid color. I'm now going to use card GPA. And I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to make it, instead of any one color, I'm just going to make it black, but really, really faint shade of black. So 000, zero, zero and like 0 0.2 or something. Oh, pass. Let me get to 0 0.1. So now I can see through this background color and see the texture through it. So that's pretty cool. I have a question. How is uh, color RGBA different from RGB? Uh, it's just oh. RGB plus an alpha channel. Alpha channel, okay. It's alpha channel. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Alright, now I'm going to deploy it and that some of you tested on IE. <coughs> Let's wait for it. Alright, it deployed. So could could volunteers test that on IE for me? You're not going to get your uh, effect because you get the WebKit specification on the uh, transform the transition. Oh, where? In the uh, Avatar Hover. Out of our hover. Right. But IE doesn't support transitions. Or anyway, yeah. yeah. It doesn't support that. And uh, there's no background color behind but, it. Oh, okay. Thank you. So so this guy is saying Firefox is not, it's not showing me what? That's what that's that's and Okay. So that's because I didn't use the vendor prefixes for Mozilla. So I think that should be easily fixable. So I just make. I just copy all of these and probably should do it on the dorm like that as well. So <coughs> uh, what about on IE? What are we seeing there? Oh sorry, I just wanted to add something. If you move your transition it's to the avatar element instead of the hover, you'll get them on, on hover and off hover. It's kind of a weird thing, I think. Uh, Does that make sense? If you put the, transition, yeah, yeah, yeah. put the transition on the element and not on the hover, <coughs> and you'll get it in both directions. Kind of oh, strange. So, so all of these? No, just, just the, the transition, not the transition. Oh, just, just, oh I, I got you. Yeah. Oh, so good, I good, good point. <laughs> well, it's, it's just one of those weird things. That that completely makes sense actually. So let's 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 see the improvement that we make. Oh, oh I think you need to move all the different all the different ones. Oh. Just the transitions but not the transforms. Oh, oops. Yeah, it's kinda of strange. Okay. So just the transition. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So then right. that matter no, no, no. I mean it's going like that. This is cool to it's good for the demo. Because this is the kind of thing you're, you're going to run into when you actually do it yourself. So, yeah, so I move all the transitions over to the original one. Yeah, oh! <laughs> now it's all smooth, both directions. Good. Alright, uh, so anyway, let's get back to the subject. So, how does it look on. Oh, let, me, let me deploy it again because I made some changes. How is it looking on IE now? IE 8. The sections have no backgrounds. Sections have no backgrounds? Or, or, or it, is, it doesn't see through to the text? No, there's nothing behind the section. Ah, okay. Oh, I know why. Come on. All right. 
Yeah, there's no background, and that's because I made the background color RGBA, and uh, IE just doesn't understand, so it just ignores it. So, um, so there's a couple of ways I could do it right now. Like one, probably the obvious way is to before this RGBA declaration, you give it a fallback of a solid color, like that. And I mean, I understand that one, so it's cool. And then it just ignores this one, it, which is fine. And but I don't like that the look of this. I think <coughs> instead I want to I want to draw a border because I still want to see the texture. So um, and I I'm going to use modernizer for this part. So so one of the things modernizer does for you. Is um, it'll, it'll detect a whole bunch of different features, uh, different um, HTML5 features. And see, see what kind of features this browser supports, and then for for each browser or for each feature that works, it'll add a class to the HTML element. So you're looking at them right here. Um, So like um, so it, it supports font base, for example. That's how we get web fonts, and it supports uh, <coughs> shadow and box shadow and things like that. And it supports RGBA. So those are the things that we're using. If it if the browser doesn't support a feature, it'll instead say no dash that feature, uh, which is going to be the case for IE. So then that allows us to write these conditional CSS rules that target like target either like browsers that support that feature only or only browsers that don't support a particular feature. So here I want to do a conditional rule that says if the browser doesn't support RGBA colors then I want to just draw a box around this uh, rectangle instead. So I would say no RGBA. Then for all the sections, um, and I'm going to revert this one that gives it a background color. I'm going to just give it a border, give it some kind of off white border. Like that. Maybe slightly darker. So yeah, that's the effect that I want. So yeah, modernizer gives you conditional CSS rules based on features. Uh, and I would call that graceful degradation because I went I started designing for the advanced browser and then I went back to the older browser to make it work. Alright. Uh, Alright, let's, let's make a CSS3 button. So I have this RSVP button. I want to make it look good. And, and <coughs> because of CSS3, you can, you know, you know, make buttons look pretty fancy just by using CSS. So if you just Google for CSS3 button, there's a bunch of like CSS3 button generators that you can use for free. So like this one, uh, you can like tweak different things here if you want. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different things you can tweak here, and when you're done, you can just copy this CSS and paste it into your CSS file. I, I'm not going to even talk. Uh, well, let's call this RSVP button because that's the idea I gave it. Uh, did that work? There it is. Now we have the RSVP button. Eh. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got that. There's, a, there's another cool one that I like. Uh, it's called this punch button. I kind of like that. Let's try that. 
So I'm just going to steal his CSS. So I'll copy out his CSS here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 